Let us now write a few more lambda expressions to flex our lambda muscles. This is kind of practice to see what it takes to build these lambda expressions, uh, you know, compared to the kind of functions that we are used to. So for instance, uh, let's start with the greet method. So we had like a greeting function, which was a lambda expression, which looks something like this. This is um, an empty list of arguments and the, the actual body of the function was system dot out dot print of uh, hello world. This is a lambda expression. What this does is have a function in line which takes in no arguments and the body of the function just does system dot out dot print of hello world. So this function is assigned to the variable called greeting function. All right. Now, one thing that you must have noticed is I don't have the type here. What is the type of this variable greeting function? Let's hold that thought for a bit. I haven't talked about the type of these lambda expressions yet. I'll cover that a bit later, but for now I want you to focus on just the right hand side here. Now, obviously, since this is Java, I need to declare this type of the greeting function. I haven't done that here. Uh, that's actually why I'm typing this in a different editor and it's not Eclipse because I don't want the squiggly lines to show up and distract us. So again, hold the thought about the left hand side for a bit and what the type of these variables are. The right hand side is the expression itself that we are focusing on at this time. Now, one of the advantages of having this function be assigned to a variable is that this variable can be passed around. You can send it to another method as an argument and have that method have access to this function. So for instance, I can do a greet method. I can call a greet method and pass in the greeting function, right? So you remember we were talking about how you need to write, you need to be able to write a public uh, void greet, which takes in some kind of an action and then it performs that action, right? So this is kind of enabling that, isn't it? You're able to take this action and assign it to a greeting function. The action being just printing of uh, hello world. And now if we were to pass this, there is a way for our greet method to accept that Lambda expression and execute it. The syntax is obviously not this. We'll talk about how to execute a Lambda function in a bit, but that's the idea. We have encapsulated a function in a variable that can be passed around and it can be sent to other methods. That's really cool. Now what's even cooler is you don't really have to assign it to a variable. You can have this lambda expression be inline. So let's say I were to take this out and uh, instead of assigning it to a variable and passing it here, I can just pass the lambda expression here like this. So what we're doing is we are passing a lambda expression, a function to the greet method. And that function is inline right here. So this is a function which doesn't take any arguments and it just prints hello world to the console. Right? This is one way in which we typically use lambda expressions. We can have that be in line. So we'll write a few more lambda expressions and that will make sense. But at this point of time, let's look at different varieties in which we can write these expressions. So this is a lambda expression, which is a function. Now, functions are not always with empty parameters. You might need a function which takes in arguments. Now, how do you write that as a lambda expression? Now let's say I have a function which is a double number function which takes in an integer and returns a double of that, right? So let's say I have this double number function which is, uh, let, let's write the method at this time. Let's say this is a public int double, all right? And then I have an int a and what this does is it returns a times two. Okay, so this is my function that I want to assign to this. This is not a lambda expression. Now, what do I have to do to convert this to a lambda expression? Well, the first thing is remove the modifier. It's not attached to a class, it's inline. So public doesn't make sense. So get rid of this. Next, the name here doesn't make sense because we're going to be referring to this function by using this name, double number function. So we're going to get rid of this. Next is the return type. Again, like I said, the compiler now is smart to detect return types in Lambda expressions. So it sees that this is a times two. So it knows that this is an integer because the input is an integer. So integer times two should be another integer. So it says, I've got this, don't send me this. So we're gonna remove this. 
So this is our lambda expression, but remember there's one other thing we need to do, which is the arrow, which is the minus and the greater than symbol. Now this, let me add the semicolon here. Now this is a complete lambda expression. Again, since this is just one line, I can use the shortcut. Get rid of this here. And now here's another shortcut. If your lambda expression is just one line, you can skip the return as well. So what Java compiler is going to do is what the Java interpreter is going to do is it's going to look at what the body of the function is and it is going to return that. So you don't have to specify a return here. So this makes it really, really crisp and really, really terse. So this is a lambda expression which takes in an integer and it returns this. So what's on the right hand side of this arrow is actually the return. So this might seem a bit confusing. So let's do one more. Let's do a function which adds two numbers. Let's call this the add function, which takes in two arguments, two integers, and then it returns the sum of those two. So what would this look like? This is the structure, right? And then there is, first of all, there is the input arguments, this is the arrow, and then what is being returned. So what are the input arguments for adding two numbers? It's int a and then int b. Now what does it return? It is a plus b. This provides a lambda expression which adds two numbers up. Pass in these two arguments, it returns this, which is a plus b. Okay, now if you look at this, you might be asking a question, well, how does it work over here? Is the greeting function returning the return of system.out.print? In a way, yes, because system.out.print really returns a void, so it works over here. But what if this were returning something else? This is a question that you're going to have to hold on to for a little bit longer. Let's write a few more lambda expressions and I'll talk about two things that I said I will talk about later. One is the type of these expressions and uh, how to call them. And the return type is something that we'll address when we talk about the type of these, ex these variables. All right, so let's do one more. Uh, let's call this a divide function. Let's call this a safe divide function, right? I want to write a safe divide. Which, uh, which basically takes in two integers and it returns an integer division. And uh, what it also needs to do is make sure that you don't do a divide by zero, right? If the second argument is a zero, it just returns zero. But if the second argument is not zero, then do an integer division. All right, so let's see how that works. I can do an int a and int b, and I can do this, right? a slash b. Now this is gonna do a divided by b and it's going to return it. But what I want is a safe division. I want to make sure that the second argument is not zero. So for this, I need to add an if block. And since I need to add an if block and this function has grown to more than one line, I need to add the curly braces. So let me go ahead and do that here. So I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to add the curly braces. And here I'm going to say if b is equal to zero, then I want to return zero else I return a divided by b. Okay, so this is my lambda expression. Again, since this is more than one line, I have to add the curly braces. All right, I'm gonna do one last expression to really drive the point home and then we can wrap this up. So let's say I wanna add, uh, I wanna create a function which does a string length count, right? So let's say string length count function. The real name of these really do not matter. I'm just putting some arbitrary names over here. It's just a variable name. So what is this function going to be like? It takes in a string and it returns the count of the number of characters in that string. So let's say this is going to be a string s and then this returns s star length. Okay, this is a lambda expression which finds out what the length of the string is given an input string argument. So hopefully by looking at all these things, all these different examples, you're kind of getting familiar with uh, and comfortable with writing Lambda expressions these in this way. So in the next tutorial, we'll tackle some of the pending questions. First of all, what's the type of this, of these variables? And uh, secondly, given a variable like this, let's say I give you this variable, which is the string length count function which holds this lambda expression, which holds this function. How do I execute this thing? Let's look at that in the next tutorial.